How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me again on tea. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee you. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna make you a roux. We'll talk about it, I've got it most made. And then we'll make a rabbit gumbo. Who in isn't that good? <laughs> Let me turn this fire on right now while I'm thinking about it. There you go, I got fire. I also, I'm gonna have to turn this fire on here and stir this roux because I started that a little early because I didn't have anything else to do, so I just sat down here and made a damn roux. <laughs> and it, uh, it looks good. Yes, it does. And I got a bunch of stuff got to go in it. I got to turn the fire on under it too. Now we got it. Go to low, that's medium, medium low. But that roux is just exactly the right color like good chocolate, only oh, it's not chocolate, no. And I got to tell you all one story before I get started. It's a true story that happened to me and my papa years and years ago when we were in Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, I like Lafayette, but there's one thing I can tell you about it. It's the only town I've ever been in my life where you can get in one, one street and you can get lost. <laughs> and we were lost. Papa and I were lost and bad. And uh, he said, look, we're not going anywhere. We, uh, would you mind? That said, the young boy over there stopped. Let's just ask him where we're going to go, huh? I said, OK, Papa. So we stopped, and he said, come here, son. I want to ask you something. The little boy came over, and he said, son, can you turn what this road on the right hand would take me if I got on that, huh? The little boy said, mister, I hate to show you this, but me, I don't know. Papa said, well, how about the, on this road on the left hand there? Can you tell me that, that road would go up if I get on that, huh? He said, again, I hate to tell you this, mister, but me, I don't know. Papa said, look, son, like I'm looking straight ahead. Can you tell me that road would go if we got on that, huh? Little boy said, mister, it broke my heart to tell you this. But me, I don't know that too, though. Papa said, now, son, we're not going to do it, but suppose we turn around and go just like we come from. Can you turn that road we took me if I do that, huh? Little boy said, Mr. Underground is my heart broken. One million piece is broke so bad. But me, I don't know that too, no. Papa said, son, you don't know a damn thing. <laughs> Little boy said, that's right, but I ain't lost. <laughs> Now, in this roux that I made here, I want to tell you what I put in it. I put about a cup of olive oil, or if, I, if I'd had good bacon drippings, I would have used that. Tastes more better. And also, I put two and a half cups of flour, and I started stirring the minute I put it in there. Now, that is looking good. Into this roux, I'm going to put some onion. I'm going to put, let me move this, this roux thing that I know by heart. Anybody want to ask a question about Rue, you can ask me when the show is over. I'll be glad to tell you. I got right here two cups of chopped onion, and we're going to put them in here right now in this Rue because it's just brown enough. You just want to get it to the brown. I got it there right now, and you can see on the camera that it's just right. Put this in here and stir it a little bit. Anytime you add anything when you're cooking Cajun style, you got to stir every time you add something. If you do that, you're gonna get it right. If you don't do that, it may come out right, but most probably it ain't. I'll stir that in there, and I'm, I'm gonna brown this and cook these onions at the same time. Let's go. Now, in this pot right here, I got some water. I think I got about eight cup of water in there. And into that water, after I get the rest of this stuff in here, this is bell pepper. It's a, let's see, that's a half a cup 
of bell pepper, chopped. My hands clean, moist them yesterday. <laughs> Throw that too into this, good. Yeah, and here too. Go ahead on there, you're doing right. And then I got to put some celery. And this is one of the few things I use celery for, rabbit gumbo. I usually just use parsley. But I got celery in there now. And uh, I got to get me some water in a few minutes, because I'm not going to pour my wine. I'm going to pour my wine in here. Mm-hmm. That's looking good. Come on, Sherry. Let's go in here right now. Ah, doing good. And while, as soon as I get this stirred a little bit, I'm gonna put some parsley. That's about a half a cup of celery I put in there. That's a half a cup of chopped fresh parsley. It's all fresh vegetable we got on here today with this stuff. Now, I make things like this sometimes with dried vegetables, but I don't do it like this, no. Now, okay. Come on, parsley. Let's get that in there. Put that there. And while this is doing, I'm gonna go get me about a cup of water I'm gonna pour in here in just a few minutes there. And before I put it in with the rest of it, and while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put that two cups of dry white wine. This is Chablis. Good to drink, good to pour in gumbo. Don't make no difference. Don't ever cook with a wine that you won't drink. <laughs> when you buy what cooking wine, there's no telling what all's in it. It's, uh, it'll change the taste of everything that you got. And you know, Cajun people are funny about that. They like to do their own arranging uh, things like that and sauces and stuff. I know I do, and I'm half Cajun, and hell, they feel full bleed when they ain't no telling what they'll do. Now, there's some water in there already. Why? <laughs> now, I got to get me a little water to put in this right here to bring this roux back like I want it. And I'll just take this little deal to walk over here and get a little water. If you don't mind, in fact, I'm gonna walk over here and do it whether you mind or not. <laughs> you might just as well not mind. Now, it's cold water you put in a roux. You don't put hot water in a roux. So get me about, I'll get me about a cup, cup and a half of water and put it in there, and then I'll bring that roux back to like I want it. And that's to look good and be smooth. It's got to be smooth, you know. If it ain't smooth, it ain't no good, no. That's why you use cold water, by the way. Come on now. Hear that sizzle? Sizzle's good, I guarantee you. All right, now, Rue, let's get together. Now I can put the garlic, chopped garlic in there. I don't ever put garlic in. If you put garlic in there too quick, it doesn't get any flavor. It, uh, it, it just closes up. If it's, if it's just put in grease or something hot, because it hasn't got water. So this is about, let me see, a tablespoon, one tablespoon full of chopped garlic. It look like a lot, but it's not, not much at all. Use my tasting spoon to get that out of there. I need every drop of it. Okay, and we stir it all together. Now, what this says to do here now, I sometimes do it like that, and sometimes I don't. But with that roux, I got to put it in here. You know, two ways about that, and I'm gonna put it in there too. And I'm going to turn the fire off under this and let, her, let it cook just a little bit more. Hold oh, steady. Where'd that go? Didn't go anywhere. It stayed right there. I tell you. I'm going to tell you all the story in a minute, but I've got to finish this right now. Get away. I like it. Ooh, that's looking good, yeah. Into this water. I'm going to take this thing off to where it won't burn me. I don't want to put it on my spoon. No, uh, Now you go over here. Now I got it. Into this, I've got some sausage. I've got a pound, just about a pound 
of smoked sausage. Smoked sausage are on do it. We use on do it, but I couldn't get any when I was uh, looking for some shopping stuff at the store. My hands are clean like I told you. I put this one pound of smoked sausage. Then I'm gonna put the rabbit meat in there. You know that water's hot? <laughs> I guarantee it's hot. Just stir that a little bit. Now you go. You got to put some salt on that. I know. Let me see how much salt I'm supposed to put on that salt. It says salt to taste. Well, my taste for salt is not like everybody else's. And I got to put some steak sauce in there. Come here to me. I don't have to put much, just a couple of tablespoons full, I think. Yeah, two tablespoons full of steak sauce. Here I go. We'll just put that in the water while I'm thinking about it. One. Two. <laughs> that spoon wouldn't, wouldn't measure right anyhow. Got that fixed. Now, I'm going to put a little Louisiana hot sauce in there. It says to taste. And I'm going to put salt in there to taste. Here's salt coming. Let me see what I'm going to put in there. Let's see now, and then this, okay. I'm gonna hold off there and put uh, about uh, three tables, three teaspoons. Now this is a teaspoonful, you don't believe me. I'll measure that for you to show you I know what I'm talking about. Come here to me, teaspoon. There I go. You just didn't believe that'd be a teaspoon, did you? Huh? That's what it is. and stir. Come here, rabbit. La pan. That's heavy. Come here. You did well, not in the bowl it weighs so much. Put this rabbit in there real good. You chop it big, because when you've got to cook it a long time, it'll cook apart and be just bite-sized when you get ready to eat it, yeah. Put the rabbit on there like this. When I get all this in there, I'm gonna put the roux in there and stir it real good. And it's gonna taste good. It's gonna smell good. I guarantee it is. Come on, rabbit. This was, uh, this wasn't the Easter rabbit, no. He comes to my house on Easter time, he's had it, I can tell you. <laughs> Now, a little Louisiana hot sauce doesn't hurt anything. Let me dry my hand on my dish towel that I got right here. Mm-hmm. Can't work with wet hands? No. That'd make it get burned easy. Now, I'm not gonna put much in there. Said the taste. This is to my taste. One, two. Believe it or not, that's not a whole teaspoon full of hot sauce. And this is mild hot sauce. It's not real hot. It's the kind I like, so that's the kind I use. Let me move this out of the way. Did I put any more salt in there? No, I didn't. No, I got to put a little, got to put a little more. Yeah. You thought I forgot that, but I didn't. No. That's three teaspoons full of salt, which is enough. Stir that in there. All right, now get to cook. Now what I'm going to do is put this in that. And I think I'd make it, got to make it. Right here let's go. And we'll gradually stir that in there too. And if I see I need more water, I'll go get more water. I don't think I will need more though. Oh boy. That's a beautiful roux, you know that? I'm telling you the truth. Proud to make a roux like that. You know when you burn a roux, you just gotta start over. That's all there is to it. Nothing you can do about it except start over. Boy, that's coming out of there just as clean and nice. <laughs> Bless your heart. I can give it these fire. You know, I like to cook with gas because I can control my fire much more better when I cook with gas than when I cook with Alex Trudy. 
things that are all related are possibly can. You're going to get it all. I'll tell you about making a rule. Let's go back to making a rule here, man. Uh, try to practice uh, making a rule by how it looks to you. One of the things we say frequently down where I used to live, we say uh, it's going good, and look, look at your, get over your, your rule and look at it, and if you can see yourself in there like a mirror, your rule's done. Of course, you may want to brown a little bit more, you can do that too. Oh, the rule is getting mixed up right. Let me get just something I need to hold that pot with. I ain't gonna hold it with my bare hand, I can tell you that. Hmm. Now, let's get the stud. We got stud in the room pretty good. Oh, man. You see, he's acting all right. He's right. You can see that, can't you? Oh, boy, I love to do this. I got to tell you another story when I'm doing this. It reminds me of a story that happened, actually happened in Terrebonne Parish in Homo. I'll never forget the uh, sheriff down there was Prejean. Nice man. Knew him real well. And Prejean, you see how that root is all, all good in there? He does it real good. I got to turn that fire down a little and let this cook. But I'll tell you one thing. Old Prejean was in his office one day, and one of them Cajuns come in there and said, Sheriff, we would like to ask you to do a favor. He had about three or two people with him. Uh, pretty, pretty sure say, oh, you want me to do a favor for you, huh? And he said, yeah. They said, yeah. He said, if I possibly can, I'll be glad to do it. What do what, what you want me to do for you? She said, Sheriff, what we want you to do is get us one more month to hunt duck. She said, pretty sure say, what do you say? He said, what I want you to do is get us one more month to hunt duck. One more month to hunt duck? He said, that's right. He said, well, you hunt them 12 months in a year now, you get a new month, you've got to get a new name for it right now. <laughs> mm. Mm. I got to stir this quite a bit because sometimes those roots try to act smart and don't want to dissolve good, but this is dissolving, dissolving real good, I guarantee. Ooh, I tell that duck story, it remind me of another one. Remind me of another duck story I got to tell you. And I'm going to cut this fire down a little bit because I don't want to burn something. Not me. Mm -mm. Not working all that hard. All right, where's the fire? There's the fire. It's on medium. I'm going to put it on medium low, down to low. Yeah, that looks good. That's just right. I never will forget. Years ago on False River, the two Cajuns went down there to hunt duck. They went down there because they were looking out there one day at Lake, uh, at that beautiful lake they got down there. And, uh, still that in there, all right. And, and boy, the lake was black with duck, all kind of duck out there. So they said, well, we got to go to the house and come back here tomorrow and, and, and hunt some duck. So they went back to the house and they got all the stuff they need. They're shooting the twice barrel carabine and their carabine and uh, all that stuff in shell and a little drinking whiskey. They went by a bar and had a good time that, that night and went back to Fort River. They went back in the little room, that little motel where they rented the room, went in there and went to bed. Next morning they got up and looked out there and it was black with ducks and more. Oh boy. So they get out and get their, their twice barrel carabine and the automatic shoot gun, and they go out there and get on their belly just like a snake and crawl this little patch of grasses, and that little patch of grasses, and that little patch of grasses, and they get close, close on them duck, and they raise up when they do that. The sky get black with duck, not a duck, not even a pool dude left on the lake. They say that's bad, so they went back to town. One of them say, I know just what we're going to do. We're going back to town. We're going to the abattoir. And we're going to get us one of them cow hide because I saw them cow grazing out there and them duck did not fly because of them cow, no. We're going to go get a cow hide. We're going to come back here and go to bed tomorrow morning. We're going to put them cow hide on us. 
we gonna be a cow. We can go out there and get them duck. He said, let's go. They went to Baton Rouge to the abattoir for 50 cents. They got a nice, beautiful cow hide. They went back to the little motel, drink a little more, have a good time. And they went to bed the next morning to get up just as daylight was getting to flicker the least little bit, you know? And they go out there and they put that cow hide on. One of them in the front, and the other one in the back, the behind. He said, let's go. And they go to this little patch of grass and make it like to eat. And that little patch of grass and make it like to eat. And this little patch of grass and make it like to eat. Man, they hit really getting with it there with them dog. And they get out there just close enough, and one of them ran up, the other one beat him on the back. He said, what you beat me for, Ray, you're going to shoot. Do not you see all those duck out there? He said, forget about them duck. Here comes the bull. <laughs> Coming real good. Hoo-wee. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go over here. And I got some of this I fixed when you all weren't looking. I'm put a little rice in my bowl. Sit down there and look at you and tell a story maybe and maybe not. And then I got a little rice that I cooked. Then I'm gonna put that in my bowl. And that's just cool enough to, your rice don't have to be real hot. But if you've got good hot gumbo, ooh-wee. Let me get a little spoon to use for my rice. Get this rice and put it on there. Break it up a little bit. This rice is cold. I don't care. I love cold rice. But it's hot enough to wet this gumbo. When it hits on it, it'll heat it up, I guarantee. <laughs> All right. Now, let me tell you something most people don't know. This is filet, gumbo filet. This is made from the leaf of the sassafras tree. And it's pounded, it's not ground up. It's pounded, it makes a very, just like a meal. And you put just a little bit of that on your rice, see? Just a little bit. Not too much. It's got a flavor of its own, and it thickens up, it helps thicken up that gumbo a little bit if the gumbo doesn't got tin on you, you know? So, what we'll do, we just haul up there and move this, put that over there out of my way, put the top back there so I don't broke nothing, take the top off of this gumbo, ha. <laughs> and that looks good, yeah. Ooh-wee. And I got what they call, what I call a, some people call this a leader. That's a dipper to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna stir that around a little bit. Reach down in there, get me a little rabbit. Put it on my rice with that filet. Get a little sausage, a little sausage. Don't need but one of you. Got to get some juice though. To get some juice, cause that looks good. Smells good too. Mm-hmm. I'll get a little tea. Put the lid back on it. I don't want to make people eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, man, let's go sit this down right here on this plate like I got down. And I'm going to just sip that like a, I should. I'm going to eat it with a spoon. I'm not going to sip it, no. Sit myself down and pour myself just a little taste of wine, you know. I believe. With this, I'm supposed to have a white wine. I got some there, but I prefer red wine, so I'm gonna use red wine to pour a little bit in there. And take a little sip, maybe. Maybe two, three, three or two more, you know? <laughs> you know, tell them and pour a little bit there. You know, go. This is good, this is a Merlot wine. That's the sip enough, boy, hold still. <laughs> I mean, and a napkin. Don't want to get these dungarees, I got to use these again, you know. Put it there and tuck it in my belt. <laughs> so what do we now? Ha! Look her here now. Don't you wish you had some of this? Ha! Hey, Lord. I guarantee you, let me see how it's going to taste. I'm doing all that bragging and stuff, it may taste like hell. All right, do you stand a little taste of the, of the bungo? Gumbo, that is. 
Come over here. That is good, I guarantee. Come here, rabbit. You see how you can. Meshach. For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Meshach, that's the Justin Wilson fine products, justinwilson.com. That is good.